Hi, it's Michael from DNA here, and over the next few minutes you're going to learn about how you can manage lecture recordings that you've made using a piece of software called Audio Note Taker. Now we've already talked about Olympus Sonority, which is the piece of software that comes as standard with most Olympus digital recorders, but Audio Note Taker is a separate piece of software. You may have received this in relation to a disabled student's allowance application if you've made that application in relation to something like dyslexia or dyspraxia. This software also works with the index marks that you can make on an Olympus digital recorder and I think it takes this idea one step further because as you start looking at the software you'll see there's a lot of visual attributes that you can start adding to your recording and this gives you a lot more scope for creativity and using different learning styles to make the most of your lectures. And just like Sonority, we're going to go through a strategy for making sure that you file and organize your recordings straight away so that you can be sure of accessing the content that you want to listen to with a minimum of fuss. Now, when you first open Sonocent Audio Note Taker, if you have a digital recorder connected, you should see that it opens with the focus on this portable devices tab. And this shows you all the files inside your digital recorder. I've just got this one here selected in folder A. Now if you look at the bottom left hand corner of the screen there's a couple of options for copying files, copy all and copy selected, but also an option to delete all these recordings that you're copying from the device after you've moved them over, which you might want to consider if you like the idea of doing all of the filing on your computer and just keeping the recorder as a capture device. So that just makes it a little bit easier to manage your recordings, I think. For now, I'm just going to copy the selected file, and it's a very small file, so that's immediately copied it over, and can you see it's moved us into the All Audio Files tab. So now, this is all the audio files on your computer. So we're just going to choose this file that we've been copied over, and to turn this into an audio note in Audio Note Taker, all you need to do is double click on it. So I'm going to do that now with the left mouse button. And we can immediately see the audio being loaded into Audio Note Taker. So these blue blocks that we can see on the screen here, those are Audio Note Taker's representation of audio. And the little spaces in between them, that's just Audio Note Taker's attempt to say that whoever was speaking left a little break there. In future videos, we're going to talk a lot more about creativity in Audio Note Taker and ways in which you can really make the lecture something personal to you. But at the moment, as mentioned, we're going to concentrate on the strategy, getting this stuff into Audio Note Taker, saving it, filing it, making sure that we've got the slides attached to it as well, so that when you want to revise, it's very easy for you to jump straight to the part of the lecture that you want to listen to. So first of all, let's just have a look at these little boxes that we've got here. Each of these boxes represents a place in the recording where you have pressed the index mark button using your digital recorder. So this is just a test lecture that I threw together. There's not an awful lot of audio here. If you imagine that this might be a lecture that you've recorded at university, you might find these sections with the blue blocks are much larger between each index mark. So the first thing we want to do is get a presentation into our lecture and to do that we use this import button at the top of the screen. Now if you click on that you can see there's a number of options here so if you wanted to add additional audio you could do that with some different images. But we're going to go ahead and choose slides and I'm going to choose this short presentation that I've already made and there we are the presentation has loaded in. Uh, so we just got five slides here quite a short presentation. Now when I was making this recording I pressed the index mark on the digital recorder every time the slide changed. So if you do a similar thing in your lectures, you should find that when you import your presentations using the import button at the top of the screen, it should correspond exactly one slide per index mark. Don't worry if it doesn't quite fit, if there's been some problems. I'm going to think about how you can move slides around and change index mark breaks in the next video, but for now we'll just keep concentrating on getting our filing done. So what you'll notice is we've also got this title, topic, speaker and recording date at the top of the screen here. I would immediately click on this button in the corner of the screen. It might look slightly different in different versions of Audio Note Taker, but it has the same function. It just opens up 
this section so that you can make changes here. Now it's already imported the title of the PowerPoint presentation and I'm happy with that title so I'm going to leave that but of course you could change it if you wanted to. You can choose a topic if it's appropriate to do that. I do tend to put in a speaker. I'm going to put my surname in here, Woodman. And if the date is wrong, you can always click on this button and change the date. You've also got a handy little button that you can press on to automatically jump to today's date as well. Now when you're finished, you can click on the little tick there. And now it's worth saving this file. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. You can either click on the Save button here or click here at the top left hand corner of the screen and click on Save. And I'm just going to save this into my audio note taker folder. Now if I shut Audio Note Taker down and then load it back up again, we'll find that it's done some filing for us. Now what you'll notice is we've got a few tabs open at the top of the screen. I'm going to click on this one which should automatically open when you start the software called All Notes Files. And here we can see all the different audio notes that I've made and we've got these bars at the top of the screen that we can use to organize things. So if I click on the speaker tab here, it will start to organize my notes in relation to the speaker information I put in earlier. And if I click on the recorded tab, it's going to do something similar there. And this is a really friendly interface that really does your filing for you, I think. So let's just choose our introduction to inspiration. And once that loads, you can pretty much click at the beginning of each slide and just use the play button to listen back to that particular slide. After you've done this, you're going to want to investigate the rapid fire function. There we are, and there's me talking about the rapid fire function in Inspiration. Now in this video we have really barely looked at all at playback and how you manage audio in Audio Note Taker. That was very deliberate because I really wanted to just get you used to this idea of coming home getting your recordings from your recorder onto your computer, getting it filed, adding in the slides, so that when you want to come back and revise from a particular lecture, you can do that very, very easily. It's easy to get overwhelmed if you've recorded a lot of lectures, so make sure that you do this process as soon as you get home. Then you can think about actually listening back to it, which we'll cover in the next video.